Hello everyone! Welcome to the Port Calls YouTube channel. For today's video, we are going to share with you a recent webinar we had on express and implied abandonment, what you should know. Our speaker and consultant discusses the definition of abandonment, types of abandonment, and the remedies of the importer. Attorney Erwin Andaya is the head of Customer Care Center, Bureau of Customs, Port of Cebu. He is also the Vice President for Professional Development of the Chamber of Customs Brokers, Cebu Chapter. Here is Attorney Andaya. My topic is all about express and implied abandonment, what we need to know. Our objectives for this afternoon's lecture will be as follows. Number one, we will learn the concept of abandonment. What is abandonment? Number two, the CMTA provisions on abandonment. We'll discuss about sections 1129 and 1130 of the CMTA. Third, the instances of express and implied abandonment. So meron palang dalawang types yung abandonment, express and implied. So we'll get to know these two things. And lastly, what are the requirements, penalties, and surcharges for lifting and claiming of impliedly abandoned goods or proceeds of, of impliedly abandoned goods which were already disposed by the Bureau of Customs in accordance with the provisions of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. So we'll talk about abandonment. Let's first define what abandonment is. Abandonment is considered as the renunciation by an importer or the owner of the goods of all his interest and property rights over the imported goods. So why is there renunciation? I'd like to invite all of you to section 405 of the CMTA. In section 405 of the CMTA, the law provides for the liability of importer for the payment of duties and taxes. And as shown on your screen, it reads as, unless relieved by laws or regulations, the liability for the payment of duties, taxes, and other charges constitutes a personal debt due and demandable against the importer in favor of the government. So once a person brings in goods into the Philippines, there is a corresponding obligation of that person to pay the duties and taxes due on his or her importation. And if ever, for whatever reason, the importer could no longer pay or, the, or no longer has the ability to pay and he wants that to be discharged, then the importer may expressly abandon the goods in favor of the government and his liability will then be extinguished as far as the liability for the payment of duties, taxes, and other charges. So that is abandonment. Now let's discuss the pertinent provisions of abandonment under the CMTA as implemented by Customs Administrative Order Number 17-2019. You may ask, why are we discussing about a Customs Administrative Order? It's all because under Section 204, the Commissioner of Customs, subject to the approval of the Secretary of Finance, is empowered to issue rules and regulations to implement the provisions of the CMTA. If you read the CMTA, the provisions of abandonment are only few, I think two or three provisions of the CMTA. And the commissioner has to issue rules and regulations in order to properly define, to provide whatever remedies, to fill in the gap which the law does not provide as far as abandonment is concerned. Like for example, in section 407, it is stated that the importer has a specific period within which to file the goods declaration. And this period may even be extended on valid grounds. The law just mentioned about valid grounds, but the law did not provide what are the instances to be considered as valid grounds. So saan natin makikita yung mga bagay na pwedeng mag-fall under the definition of valid grounds? That is the task of the Commissioner of Customs in the exercise of his power to issue rules and regulations. And we would know what are those considered to be valid grounds under the law. So in 
Customs Administrative Order Number 17-2019, this talks all about the kinds of abandonment, the effects when goods are expressly or impliedly abandoned, and the treatment of these goods. So in the general provisions of Section 4, we can find the term express abandonment. So what do you understand by express abandonment? Can I ask or can, can I ask our attendees to chat their answer? What do they understand about express abandonment? Is this when you no longer want to have your, your goods released? Or is this the same kind as, if, for example, in a relationship, if you're no longer happy with your partner and then you just leave your partner, is that the kind of abandonment that the law defines as express abandonment? Okay, I see some answers here. So express abandonment under the law as defined in Customs Administrative Order 17-2019 allows the importer or the owner of the goods to expressly abandon the shipment. And this express abandonment can happen at any time when the imported goods are within the control of the Bureau, meaning the goods are still in the port, the goods are still within the custody of the Bureau of Customs, or until the payment of duties, taxes, and other charges are not yet been paid. or when there is or when the goods are entered under the customs bonded warehousing regime until the goods are withdrawn from the customs bonded warehouses. So how will the importer signify his or her interest to expressly abandon the goods? The, the customs administrative order requires the submission of an affidavit of abandonment. In that affidavit of abandonment, the importer or the owner will state the facts. So when the shipment arrived, what is the description of the shipment, the pertinent documents that may be attached, like the bill of lading, the commercial invoice, and then the importer may also state the reason why he or she is expressing interest, uh, why he or she is expressing interest to abandon or expressly abandon the goods. For example, if the importer no longer has the ability to pay the duties and taxes, then he may state so. Or if the importer no longer wants to obtain the release of the goods because uh, perhaps there is a communication from the, from the supplier abroad that the goods which were sent to the Philippines were not, were not the specified goods. So it will be useless for the importer to release the goods because this will not be helpful or useful to him or her. Then the importer may expressly abandon the goods in favor of the government. And this is through the affidavit of abandonment. This affidavit of abandonment shall be filed before the district collector of customs of the port where the goods have arrived. And once the district collector receives this affidavit of abandonment, the district collector has a period of three days from the filing thereof to verify the due execution of this affidavit of abandonment. Bakit kailangan i-verify ni district collector yung affidavit of abandonment? Number one, the district collector must determine if the person who issues the affidavit of abandonment is the true and lawful owner of the goods. For example, if the importer is a juridical personal is a juridical person or has a juridical personality like a corporation, di ba yung corporation naman walang mata, walang kamay walang bibig na nagsasalita and the corporation acts through its corporate officers so the district collector must determine if the person who signs who signs the affidavit of abandonment is really authorized to represent the corporation otherwise the affidavit of abandonment will just be a mere scrap of paper the district collector once the Affidavit of abandonment has been verified. Once the district collector is, is, is of the belief that the owner or that the person who signed the affidavit of abandonment is the true and lawful owner of the goods or is the authorized representative of the true and lawful owner of the goods, the district collector will then issue a decree of abandonment. And what is the effect of issuing the decree of abandonment? Under the law, 
expressly abandoned goods are considered to be the property of the government upon the filing with the district collector of the affidavit of abandonment. So once the district collector issues the decree of abandonment, the importer is no longer the owner of the property. The imported goods will then become the property of the government through the Bureau of Customs, and the Bureau of Customs being the owner of the goods can now dispose of the goods in accordance with the provisions of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. So that is express abandonment. So if a person no longer wants the goods, he can expressly abandon the goods. If a person no longer wants to be in a relationship, then that person can just leave the relationship and that is express abandonment. If there's express abandonment, we also have implied abandonment. So ano ba yung implied abandonment? Okay. Implied abandonment happens when the owner or the importer fails to lodge or file the goods declaration within the prescribed period under the CMTA. We'll discuss these things in the later slides. Number two, when having filed the necessary goods declaration, the importer fails to pay the duties and taxes within the prescribed period. Number three, if the goods are regulated by government regulatory agencies such as if the goods are food products and being food products, these are regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. So the importer, in order to obtain the release of the goods, must present or submit the corresponding permit from the Food and Drug Administration. And the failure of the importer to present these permits would constitute as implied abandonment. The importer filed the goods declaration. The importer paid the duties and taxes, submitted all the required permits and whatever clearances, but failed to claim the goods. That would also constitute implied abandonment. Another instance of implied abandonment is when the importer or the owner of the goods failed to mark the goods. Ano ba tong marking? Under Section 710 of the CMTA, owners of imported goods are liable or are required to mark the goods in a manner which is permanent, clear, and delible so that the ultimate purchaser in the Philippines would know the country of origin of the goods. And if the importer fails to mark the goods within a certain period, then that would also constitute as implied abandonment. And lastly, when the owner of the goods stored in a customs bonded warehouse fails to withdraw the goods within the period prescribed under Section 810 of the CMTA. Now, let's discuss each of these instances of implied abandonment. First, the failure to lodge or file the goods declaration. Under the law, the goods declaration must be lodged or filed within the prescribed period in Section 407 of the CMTA. If I may ask our attendees, why do you think does the CMTA or does the law require the importer to file the necessary goods declaration within the prescribed period? Bakit ho? Okay. According to the deliberation of Congress, prior to the CMTA, we have the old TCCP, the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines. That's Presidential Decree Number 1464 as amended. And in the passage of Republic Act No. 7651, which provides for the provisions or the regulation on abandonment, the intention of the lawmakers was then was to give the importer a specific time frame within to file the goods declaration. Why? Because if the law will not set a period within which to file the goods declaration, then the importer will not just file the goods declaration. Diba? And the purpose of filing the goods declaration is so that customs can assess the importation. Customs can determine the value of the goods. Customs can determine the applicable tariff classification on the goods. Customs can determine the duties and taxes due on the goods. And ultimately, customs can collect 
the needed duties and taxes from these imported goods. So if walang expiration date, then the importer will just do nothing. Diba? And we all know that taxes are the lifeblood of the government. And without taxes, the government cannot survive. Without taxes, the government cannot provide the basic services needed by our people. So that's why the law provides for a specific period within which to file the goods declaration. Now, if I may ask our attendees here, what is then the prescribed period to file the goods declaration? You can answer in the chat box. Sige nga, if, if you can recall how many days does the owner or the importer of the goods file the necessary goods declaration? Can anyone share to us? I know some of our attendees here are students and reviewees in the board examination. Some of our attendees are also practitioners. So they know anyone? the answer. Sige nga, can anyone share their answers? Anyone, anyone, you can type in the chat box. Okay, so the answer is, the answer is 15 days from the date of discharge of the last package from the carrying vessel or aircraft. And the term last discharge means the unloading of the last cargo. So for example, if the vessel arrived on August 1 and that vessel carried 100 containers. So the 100th container, okay, that's the last container on board the vessel. The time that it was discharged, unloaded from the vessel, then that is the time or that is the period considered to be the date of discharge of the last package from the carrying vessel or aircraft. So I'd like to, to erase the, the idea from our attendees that the counting of the period to file starts from the date of arrival. Hindi po, kasi yung iba sa atin ang, al ang alam is the period starts to count from the date of arrival of the vessel or aircraft. Hindi po, hindi po sa date of arrival but it is the date of discharge of the last package from the vessel or aircraft. Okay. Prior to the CMTA, we all know that under the CMTA, the period is 15 days. And this 15 days is extendable for another 15 days. I'd like to show you on screen the provision of the old TCCP. The TCCP is the law which the CMTA repealed. Okay. So ano ba yung provision ng dating Tariff and Customs Code? According to the Tariff and Customs Code of the Philippines in Section 1301, the period then, the period before, was 30 days. And this 30-day period is non-extendable. So yan yung history. Okay? Under the TCCP, 30 days but non-extendable. Under the CMTA, 15 days but extendable to another 15 days. So the period now is shortened because we all know that with the use of technology, the lodgement of the goods declaration can be done even in the comfort of the homes and offices of our owners, importers, and declarants. So we now know that the period is 15 days. So let's have an example. Let us say MV Guapito, a vessel, carrying 2,000 sacks of rice, arrived in the port of Surigao on August 24, 2022. The customs inspector on board the vessel noted that the 2,000 sack was unloaded on August 26, 2022. The question now is, until when can the importer file the goods declaration in the port of Surigao? Can anyone share to us your answer? When do you think can the importer file the goods declaration with the port of Surigao? Don't be shy. Just type your answer in the chat box. Okay, someone answered here. Yes. September 9. September 9, is that correct? Okay, let's see. Some, of the, some answered September 10. 
So the answer is September 10. Wow. So you have a period of until September 10. So how do we count that period? You start to count, diba, on screen, on the problem, the last discharge was on August 26. So you count the next day. So you count to count of August 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the 15th day is September 10, 2022. So you have until September 10, 2022 to file the goods declaration. Now, what if you were not able or you will not be able to file the goods declaration on September 10, 2022? What would happen? Of course, under the provision of Section 1129, for your failure to file the goods declaration, the goods will be considered as impliedly abandoned. Okay? The period, this is what I said earlier, the period to lodge or file the goods declaration may, upon written request, extended on valid grounds for another 15 calendar days, subject to the approval of the collector of customs as may be authorized by the commissioner. So for whatever reason, the importer could not file or could not lodge the goods declaration within the 15-day period, meron pala siyang remedy. And that is to request for the extension of the period to file the goods declaration. But take note, the request must be in writing. Okay, The request must be in writing because the law provides that it should be a written request. And the request should be based on valid grounds. We'll later know ano yung mga valid grounds specified under the Customs Administrative Order. And the extension will be for another 15 days. So that's original 15-day period plus another 15 days. All in all, the importer has a period of 30 days to file the goods declaration. And this request is submitted before the district collector of customs. And this request will also be subject to the approval of the commissioner of customs. So the current practice now in the Bureau of Customs is that the importer will file the request for the extension of the period to file the goods declaration. If the district collector believes that there is legal ground to give due course to the request, the district collector will then endorse the request for approval of the Commissioner of Customs. The Customs Administrative Order provides that the request for extension shall be acted upon within seven working days. And if the corresponding office was not, is not able to respond within seven working days, the request shall be deemed approved. And the 15-day extension period shall retroact to the day immediately after the expiration of the original period. So what does this provision means or mean? Like, for example, if in our problem, you, the importer has until September 10, 2022. So what if the approval well, uh, the approval will be made or the request will be approved by the commissioner on September 12, 2022. Does that mean that the 15-day additional period will be counted starting on September 12? No, because the provision says it will retroact to the day immediately after the expiration of the original period. So you start to count again or the, the additional 15-day period will be added to the original period. Period. So, kung September 10 kanina, then it will be added on September 10, not on the day of actual approval by the Commissioner of Customs. We mentioned earlier that the request for extension must be based on the valid grounds. So, let's get to know what these valid grounds are as provided under the Customs Administrative Order. Okay, number one. So take note that the request must be made before the, the expiration of the original period. Because if you made your request after the expiration, di ba, ang request niya natin is to extend, to give another period or to extend the period to file. What is then to extend if the period has already expired? So you have to submit your request prior to the expiration of the original period. In our problem earlier, if the 15th day is on September 10, 2022, 
then if you want to file a request for the extension of the period to file, then you have to make your request on or before September 10, 2022. If you file it on September 11, September 12, or September 13, then your request will be denied because at the day of filing, the original 15-day period has already expired. And these are the grounds. Number one, fraud committed against the owner, importer, or consignee. But in my years with the Bureau of Customs, I have not heard or I have not read any request which cited fraud as the, as the ground for the extension of the period to file the goods declaration. Number two, accident. So meron na rin ako, I've encountered accident. Like for example, if the person in charge of the documents met an accident, then that's a valid ground for the extension. Because of course, if a person is, is not in the office or if the person is on sick leave or if the person is not available, so how can that person work on the papers? So it's a valid ground for the request for the period to, uh, to extend the period for the filing of the goods declaration. Number three, mistake. This is a very common ground. Like for example, in one case, the supplier, instead of sending the, the shipment for that importer, ang naipadala ni supplier is the shipment of another importer. So of course, diba? So that will not be that will not be for the benefit of the importer, yung shipment na nagkamali. So because nagkamali, then it has to send another batch of shipments. Or if not the shipment, another example would be nag nagkamali yung pinadalhang documents. Like for example, if the shipment consists of laptops, but yung documents na naipadala ni supplier are for, for furniture or for TVs, or television sets, of course, mali yung, ship, uh, mali yung document, so you could not file the necessary commercial invoice, the corresponding bill of lading, kasi mali nga yung document. So the importer may request for the extension of the period to file the goods declaration until dumating yung tamang documents. Number four, excusable negligence. If the import, if the if a person committed negligence, and then such negligence is excusable, so nagkamali yung tao niya, okay? may hindi tamang prosesong na isunod, but then that negligence is excusable, so that can be considered as a ground for the period to extend, or to extend the period of filing the goods declaration. For is majeure, there was a typhoon, nagka-earthquake, okay? whatever, whatever circumstance. So that could also be a ground for the extension of the period to file the goods declaration. If the system encounters technical issues as certified by the Management Information System Technology Group, like for example, on the 15th day, nag-file ng goods declaration si importer, but then because of system downtime, hindi na-register, hindi na-accepted, hindi na-stored yung kanyang goods declaration, at napansin niya lang after 20 days, so on the 20th day, naging tag abandoned na sa system. So the importer may request for the extension of the period to file the goods declaration citing technical issues as certified by the Management Information System Technology Group. That is the IT office of the Bureau of Customs and other analogous instances. So these grounds, the, the rule requires, the customs administrative order requires that these grounds should not be attributable to the fault of the importer, owner, or consignee. And let's have an example. A return shipment was unloaded from the vessel on August 10, 2022. Although the shipment is duty and tax-free under Section 800 of the CMTA, the importer needs to wait for the tax exemption endorsement which the DOF is scheduled to release or issue after 20 days. So if you are the importer, what then is your remedy? So meron kang shipment, duty and tax free. But you all know that under exist existing regulations ng customs, you can only avail of the duty and tax exemption if you have the tax exemption endorsement from the Department of Finance. 
And if you file the goods declaration without the corresponding tax exemption endorsement, of course, you will be asked to pay the duties and taxes due on the shipment. So if you want to avail of the duty and tax free exemption under the law, then what is your remedy? Okay, what do you think is the remedy of the importer in this particular situation? Type your answers in the chat box. Okay. You're One reading? answer says file for a provisional goods declaration. Yes, you can do that. Availing of the provision under section, C, uh, section 403. But you have to comply with other requirements. Okay. Another would be, I think the, the most practical remedy in this particular case is to file the request for extension of the period to file the goods declaration. So that is the most practical way, the most practical remedy in this particular instance. Kasi kapag nag-file ka ng provisional goods declaration, you still have to comply with certain requirements. Like you file the provisional goods declaration under a procedure code of 4PG4, and then you have to submit an affidavit of undertaking. You have to submit your proof that you have already complied with the application requirements for the tax exemption endorsement. Then you still have to, if you want to obtain the release of the shipment, you still have to file for request for, ten, for release under tentative assessment. So, mas mahabang proseso kung provisional goods declaration. Eh, yung, yung hinihintay lang naman natin is just a matter of 20 days. Unless naman, if the period would require would require a longer days. Like for example, di ba yung request for extension is only for additional 15 days. So 15 plus 15, 30 days. What if you have to wait for more than 30 days? So you could no longer file the request for extension kasi limited nga lang siya sa 30 days. So let us say, for example, if kailangan mo ng 45 days, then provisional goods declaration is the best remedy. But in this particular problem, since we are only talking about 20 days, the most practical remedy would be to file for an extension of the period to file the goods declaration. And let us say, assuming that the request was filed on August 26, 2022, do you think the request can be given due course? Do you think the request can be approved if the request was filed on August 26, 2022? What do you think? Hey, what do you think? So others answered Others answered no. Why? Yes, Miss Divine, you're correct, Miss Divine. The answer is no, but why? Why do you think so? Okay, we go back to the provision of the customs administrative order. It says that the request for the extension of the period to file must be made before the expiration of the original 15-day period. And under the given problem, the 15th day period within which to file the goods declaration was on August 25. So that part, you file your request on or before August 25. And in this problem, since nag-file siya noong August 26, of course, the request could not be given due course because the original period has already prescribed. Correct. Correct, Arvin. Correct po kayo, Ms. Define. The 15th day period already expired. And there is nothing more to extend if the period has already expired. Very good. Now, the law requires, as implemented by the Customs Administrative Order, that there should be a notice to lodge the goods declaration so that the importer will be properly notified of his obligation under the law. And the provision of the Customs Administrative Order says that the District Collector of Customs must issue a notice to lodge or file the goods declaration within five calendar days from the date of discharge of the last package. In reality, in our office, in the Bureau of Customs, the Entry Processing Division is the one tasked to check on, the, on this requirement. Okay, sila yung dapat na nagmo-monitor ng requirement na to. 
because they know if the the importer has already filed the necessary goods declaration. So my monitoring chart, the entry processing division, they have the date when the vessel arrived or the aircraft arrived. They have the date when the customs inspector reported the date of the last discharge. And they have a monitoring tool which will help them check when the fifth day from the date of last discharge is. So that on that fifth day, they will report to the district collector whose shipments or whose shipments have not yet or whose shipments have not yet filed the necessary goods declaration. Kung sino yung mga importer na ito yung mga shipments na hanggang ngayon hindi pa nagpa-file ng goods declaration. And the district collector will then notify them electronically or personal service or by posting as the case may be. So, nakalagay dito, the district collector is, in, is required to post the list of all packages discharged and their consignees in his offices or send a notice to the consignee. An imported goods with goods declaration already recorded and stored with a value-added service provider. So, sino yung mga value-added service provider natin? We have three and one of them is Intercommerce. But not successfully registered by reason of system downtime system slowdown, no response or any other technical issue on the last day of the prescribed period shall not be deemed abandoned. So hindi naman kasalanan ni importer na hindi, hindi na-register yung kanyang goods declaration with the, uh, with the E2M system. So the law provides that it shall not be deemed abandoned for this particular purpose. So that's the first case, the failure to file or failure to lodge the goods declaration. What if the importer has filed the goods declaration, has lodged the goods declaration, but failed to pay the duties and taxes due on the shipment? Will implied abandonment also take place? Yes. Under Section 4.2.2 of the Customs Administrative Order, the failure to pay the assessed duties and taxes within the prescribed period shall also constitute implied abandonment. So, these are the things that we need to take a look at. Number one, the term final assessment. Upon receipt of the goods declaration and its supporting documents, the customs personnel, referring to the customs examiner and the customs appraiser, will evaluate the goods declaration. We'll check if the value, uh, the value declared is really the transaction value the price actually paid or payable for the goods when sold for export into the Philippines. We'll check if the classification is properly made in accordance with the rules on tariff classification. The examiner will check the authenticity and due execution of whatever documents attached thereto, such as permits issued by regulatory agency, the certificate of origin for that particular shipment, and if the customs examiner or appraiser is, is of the firm belief that the, the documents are all in order, that the tariff classification is properly made, or that the value of the goods is the proper transaction value under the law, then the customs examiner and the customs appraiser will assess the goods. And how will the importer know how much he or she has to pay for the shipment, the system will generate an assessment notice. And this assessment notice is termed as final assessment notice. That assessment notice will serve as an instruction to the authorized agent bank to debit the amount of duties and taxes from the account of the importer. And under Section 429 of the CMTA, the assessment shall be deemed final if undisputed after the lapse of 15 calendar days from receipt of the assessment notice. So let us say, for example, the assessment notice was generated or was given to the importer on August 10. And on the same day, the importer received the assessment notice. The assessment becomes final after 15 days. So August 10, then that becomes final on August 26. So the shipment shall be deemed abandoned if the importer fails to pay in full 
Okay, the law requires, the regulation requires that the payment must be in full. So kung dapat mong bayaran is 1 million but you only paid 900,000 or 999,999.99, then that is not considered as full payment. And your shipment can still be impliedly abandoned under the law. So let's have another situation. Let us say the declarant filed the goods declaration on August 1, 2022. And the final assessment notice was issued on August 3, 2022. For failure to pay the duties and taxes, the shipment was deemed impliedly abandoned. So question, when did implied abandonment happen in this particular problem? When do you think did implied abandonment happen? So the, the material dates are, number one, the declarant, the declarant filed the goods declaration on August 1, and then final assessment notice was issued on August 3. So when do you think did the, when do you think the goods were impliedly abandoned? Okay, may sumagot na dito. Okay. So, di ba sabi natin kanina, goods are impliedly abandoned okay, 15 days after the date of final assessment. Sandali lang, may humabol pa sa sumagot. Okay. So, may nagsabi dito August 19. So, di ba the final assessment notice was issued on August 3. Let us assume that the importer received the final assessment notice on that same day. So you count 15 days. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So on August 18, that's a 15th day. So after 15 days, August 19, the assessment notice, okay, the assessment became final on that, on that day. So you have to count from that day. So since the assessment became final on August 18, so you have to count another 15 days from that date. So the if you count 15 days, then implied abandonment will happen only on September 2, 2022. So hindi pa tama na sinabing impliedly abandoned the yung shipment because the law provides that the importer has a period of 15 days from the date of final assessment. And final assessment or assessment becomes final after 15 days from receipt of the notice of the assessment by the importer or by the owner of the goods. Okay, that's the second instance of implied abandonment. When the owner or importer fails to pay the corresponding duties, taxes, and other charges. Okay. What, if, what if the goods are subject of an alert order? Oh, so, ano yung alert order? Alert order is the written order issued by the Commissioner of Customs or by the District Collector of Customs or any other customs officer authorized by the Commissioner in writing on the, based on derogatory information of possible violation or non-compliance of our customs law. And the grounds mentioned under the law for the issuance of alert order would be if there is an allegation of misclassification there is an allegation of misdeclaration allegation of undervaluation allegation of violation of pertinent laws rules and regulations so for example if a shipment is subjected of an alert order and the district collector after the conduct of the examination by the customs officer was convinced that the that the allegation was not true. Like for example, if there was allegation of misdeclaration, like for example, ang declare ni importer ay iba doon sa nakalag doon sa suspected actual content ng shipment. At nung inexamine yung shipment na patunayan na kung ano yung declare, yun din yung laman nung shipment. So the allegation was found to be untrue. So the district collector will then recommend to the Commissioner of Customs the lifting of the alert order. 
So the importer has a period of 15 days from the date of the date of the lifting of the alert order to pay the duties and taxes. Because if the importer does not pay within that period, that prescribed period, then that would also constitute as implied abandonment. Duties and taxes must be paid in full within 15 calendar days from receipt of the order to lift the alert order. Otherwise, the shipment shall be deemed abandoned. So for this purpose, the collector of customs referring to the district collector shall issue an assessment notice or an order of release and lifting of the alert order within five calendar days. So there will always be notice because that is part of administrative due process. Okay. The notice shall be within five calendar days upon assessment thereof, referring to the, to the role that our customs officers play as far as examination and appraisal of the shipment is concerned, or within five calendar days from affirmation by the commissioner customs of the order. Remember that in alert order, if the district collector finds that the allegation is untrue after the conduct of the examination, there was no the the allegation was found to be untrue. Kung ano yung nasa declaration, yun din talagang tunay na laman doon sa shipment, then the district collector will recommend for the lifting of the alert order. And if the commissioner affirms that, then the shipment will continue with its processing. Or if the, the commissioner did not act within the prescribed period, so naglapse yung prescribed period to review, then the district collector may order the release of the imported goods. And on that time, the importer has 15 days within which to pay the necessary duties and taxes. And this failure to do so would constitute as implied abandonment. Third, yung failure to submit the required permit. So if the importer fails to submit the required permit within 45 calendar days, if availing of provisional goods declaration under section 403 or within 15 calendar days from the date of final assessment, whichever comes first, then the shipment shall be deemed abandoned. And for this purpose, the district collector again is required to issue a notice to submit clearances, licenses, and other requirements. So why is notice very important? Because this is part of administrative due process. Fourth, the failure to claim the goods. Nag-file nga ng goods declaration. Nagbayad nga si importer. Okay? Pero hindi naman siya nag-claim ng goods. Can customs still have the goods impliedly abandoned or will implied abandonment take place? Yes. Okay. Under the law, the owner, the importer, or the consignee of the goods has a period of 30 calendar days from the payment of duties, taxes, and other charges to claim the goods. Otherwise, the shipment shall be deemed abandoned. So for this purpose, the arastre operator, terminal, or warehouse operator is required to submit a weekly written report. Yan yung magiging basis ni district collector of customs in issuing a notice to claim the goods the goods okay, stored in the warehouse or in the terminal yard or in the container freight station. Okay. Let us say passenger's baggage. So your baggage or mail matter, then you fail to, uh, you fail to claim the same. This, there is still implied abandonment if within 30 calendar days from the arrival of the passenger baggage or mail matter, the owner or the passenger or the recipient of the mail matter failed to claim these things, then there is still implied abandonment. And pareho pa rin kanina, the district collector is required to issue a notice to claim within five calendar days from the arrival of the baggage or of the mail matter. Fifth instance, the failure to mark the goods. Okay, under Section 710 of the CMTA, the owner or the importer is required to mark the goods so that the ultimate purchaser in the Philippines will know the country of origin of the goods. And if the importer fails to mark, he is given a period of 30 days to mark the goods. Otherwise, 
the goods will consider to be impliedly abandoned by virtue of the CMPE. So as mentioned here, the owner, importer, or consignee shall appropriately mark the imported goods within 30 calendar days from receipt of the notice of mark. For failing to do so, the goods shall be deemed impliedly abandoned. And the sixth instance would be when the owner or the importer fails to withdraw the goods stored in a bonded warehouse within the prescribed period. Under Section 811, goods entered for warehousing may remain in the customs bonded warehouse for a period of one year. That's a maximum period for non-perishable goods. But for perishable goods, the CMTA provides that the period is shorter. In fact, it's only three months. And that period of three months can still be extended to another three months. So that part, if yung, yung goods are considered to be non-perishable, you can have the goods stored in the warehouse for one year. If lumagpas na siya sa one year, then the goods will be considered impliedly abandoned. If perishable shipments naman, you have a period of three months to withdraw the shipment from the warehouse. And if for every reason you feel that you could not yet withdraw the goods, then you file a request for another three months. Pero pagkatapos ng three months na in a total of six months, you still did not withdraw the goods from the warehouse, then that would constitute as implied abandonment. And the goods now will be subjected to abandonment proceeding. And once the district collector determines with finality the forfeiture of the shipment, the goods will now be disposed of in accordance with the provisions of the CMPE. Bakit kailangan i-dispose ni customs? So that customs can recover the duties and taxes which were due on the shipment. Due notice requirement. Lagi nating binabanggit kanina, due notice. Failure to, play, uh, failure to file the goods declaration, mayroong corresponding notice to file na issue si district collector. Yung failure to pay naman, mayroong notice to pay, di ba? There is the assessment notice. Yung failure to claim, meron ding notice to claim. Yung failure to mark, meron ding notice to mark. So everything must be okay, must be notified. All importers must be duly notified. And that is the part of the due notice requirement. So how will importers be notified? Depending on their status. If they are accredited importers under the existing regulation, accredited importers may be notified by email. Okay, a notice shall be sent to the registered email submitted to AMO. AMO here refers to the Accounts Management Office. So I'd like to, to inform our practitioners, our industry leaders, our importers that you have to be very careful in providing your data with the Accounts Management Office. Katulad ng electronic mail address nyo, your email address is an active one because according to here, notwithstanding the failure to acknowledge the duly sent notices, the same shall be deemed received upon successful transmittal thereof. So you could not say, ay, mali pala yung email address na naka-indicate namin. Ay, yung email address na yan, hindi na po active. You cannot give that as an excuse. Okay? You cannot give that as an excuse because the law, the regulation, deem the email as having received upon successful transmittal thereof. And number two, personal service. So if accredited importer ka, you will be notified either by email or by personal service. By personal service, pupuntahan ka sa opisina at ipapareceive yung notice sa'yo. What if non-accredited importer? Then for non-accredited importer, the regulation provides that due notice shall be served either by registered mail or personal service. Kanina, accredited importer by email or by personal service. Non-accredited importer by registered mail, so by through our post office or by personal service. Sir, what if a known consignee? Then the law, the regulation requires that for a known consignees or for fictitious consignees, due notice shall be deemed complied with upon posting of the required notice. And this notice shall be posted for a period of 15 calendar days. Or, if aside from posting, the law also requires 
that there should be electronic or printed publication. But mahal kasi magpa-publish ngayon sa newspaper. So what Customs does is to post these notices through the Bureau of Customs website. Kaya meron kayong mababasa sa website ng Customs na mga notices to claim, notices to file the goods declaration, notices to pay, okay? or notices to claim or to withdraw the goods from the Customs bonded warehouses. Okay. Let us say, let's have another example. A shipment of XYZ Corporation arrived last August 15, 2022. The last package was unloaded on the same day. The district collector issued a notice to file on August 18, 2022. Diba kanina nga, within five calendar days from the date of last discharge, the district collector shall issue a notice to file. So nag-issue si district collector ng notice to file. With notice was sent to the email address. So ito yung email address, mr.a.xyz at gmail.com registered with the accounts management office. Mr. B, the manager of XYC Corporation, argued that since Mr. A, so yung owner ng email address na yan, o yung person na designated to handle that email address, is no longer connected with XYC Corporation, the notice was not properly sent to XYC Corporation. So if Mr. B correct, sabi ni, sabi ni XYC Corporation, ay sir, yung email address na yan, yung tao na merong email address na yan is no longer connected with us. So there was no proper notice that you sent to, to us, to our corporation when you when you issued the notice to file on August 18, 2022. Pwede bang maging excuse yan ni importer to justify? Okay. Could the importer use that as a valid justification? The answer is no. Why? Because the email is deemed received upon successful transmittal thereof. It is the obligation of the importer to notify the Bureau of Customs in case there is a change in the email address of the importer. In fact, nagpapa-store nga, di ba? Nagpapa-update nga sa client profile registration system si importer in case na kailangan i-update yung mga data ni importer. And for failure of the importer to update whatever information in the profile or in your CPRS profile, then that will not be an excuse on your part to comply with the regulations or to comply with the requirements under the law. Okay, so you have to be very careful when it comes to that. In fact, meron nga kaming isang, isang case na yung napadalhan ng mga notices. Okay, in fact, the notices were sent to another person. Tapos hindi nila na-check na yung email address pala ngayon, na yun was not for that corporation but for another subsidiary. So they could not make that as an excuse or a valid justification because when they submitted the data, the information, they certify that the information or that the data are true and correct. Now, we've talked about abandonment, the instances of implied abandonment, the situation where express abandonment happens, and the due notice requirement. So let's discuss now, let's talk about what are the effects of abandonment. Okay, number one, for expressly abandoned goods, expressly these goods are considered to be the property of the government. Ipso facto means by the very fact of, okay? By the mere submission of the affidavit of abandonment, expressly abandoned goods are deemed to be the property of the government. And all interests and property rights over these expressly abandoned goods are deemed renounced and are transferred to the government. So yung may-ari ng shipment ay hindi na po yung importer, kundi na ang gobyerno through the Bureau of Customs. And the Bureau of Customs can now dispose of these goods in accordance with the disposition rules under the law. Okay. For impliedly abandoned goods, they shall only be impliedly abandoned according to those things that we've discussed. Yung failure to lodge, failure to pay, failure to claim, or failure to mark. Okay. But take note, the fact that the importer expressly or impliedly abandoned the goods does not erase criminal liability as far as the importation is concerned. So for example, 
if yung laman ng shipment okay ay dangerous drugs or yung laman ng shipment are prohibited goods the fact na nag expressly abandon si importer will not erase his liability the importer may still face criminal liability for smuggling or for whatever uh, whatever violation the importation would constitute under the law so take note of that ha? hindi po na -e erase yung liability ni importer by the mere fact that the importer signifies his or her abandonment over the goods kasi merong ibang nagsasabi na ay para makalusot ako i will express the abandon the goods no or that i will imply the abandon the goods no because the law say, says it clearly the the implied abandonment or the express abandonment of the goods will not be an excuse kasi if we will allow that then any importer any smuggler any unscrupulous individual can just escape liability by the mere fact of saying i have already abandoned my property rights over the goods and that would be useless that would be futile it would be very difficult for the state to prosecute violations of our importation laws if we allow that to happen hey we've discussed about express abandonment we have discussed about the instances of implied abandonment the due notice requirement and the effects of abandonment this time let's go to another customs administrative order and i think this is one of the hotly contested okay hotly contested or highly debatable customs administrative order hindi lamang po sa pag-ibig maraming umiiyak sabi nila sa pag-ibig umiiyak yung tao hindi po sa bureau of customs bilang head po ng customer care center ilang beses ko na pong nakita na merong umiiyak hindi dahil sa pag-ibig kundi dahil sa customs administrative order number 13 that's 2020 and what does this provide okay this provides for the penalties surcharges interest and other charges for lifting claiming or recovering parts of the proceeds in the sale of impliedly abandoned goods so you may ask sir what if yung shipment ko ay naging impliedly abandoned because i was not able to file the goods declaration i was not able to pay the duties and taxes over the goods so your remedy now would be to lift okay yun yung remedy mo lifting of impliedly abandoned goods kasi anong nangyayari diyan if nag expire na yung period to file the goods declaration meaning yung 15 day period and if you try to attempt i think our industry uh, industry members here our practitioners here could attest if nag file ka ng goods declaration at yung period to file has already expired ang maglalabas diyan na error message diba you cannot successfully store your goods declaration may lalabas na error message that bl not found okay or bl no bl not found or unsuccessfully stored yung goods declaration and what does that mean na expire na po yung period to file the goods declaration and in order for you to continue with filing or lodging the goods declaration in order for you to continue the processing of your goods declaration you have to request the lifting of the implied abandonment status in the e2m system so yan po yung nakabang nakasaad sa customs administrative order number 13-2020 but meron pong malaking but that would entail payment of penalties and surcharges okay one one practical case that i can cite for you meron isang tao isang consignee isang recipient ng regalo from abroad yung anak niya ay nasa abroad and because her son loves her mother so much nagpadala yung anak niya ng regalo para sa kanyang nanay it was intended as a birthday gift for the mother but because okay, dahil hindi alam nung nanay na dumating na pala yung parcel niya i don't know what happened maybe perhaps the freight forwarder did not notify the recipient so lumagpas na 
doon sa 15-day period within which to file the goods declaration. So, kailangan niya magbayad ng penalty ngayon for lifting. So, umiiyak yung nanay na sa halip na makatanggap ng regalo, magbabayad pa siya ng penalty. So, this is our request to our freight forwarder representatives here, to our customs brokers here. Okay? Kindly inform your clients of the specific period that the law requires for the filing of the goods declaration. Kasi nga, kapag lumagpas ka na doon at magre-request ka for lifting, you have to pay specific penalty. At hindi po, napak hindi po maliit yung penalty. The penalty is very substantial. And I'll discuss to you the penalties later. So, nabanggit ko na kanina, if the shipment is tag abandoned in the system because of your failure to file the goods declaration within the prescribed period, ano yung remedy mo? Your remedy is to file for the lifting of the impliedly abandoned goods. And Section 6.1.1 of Customs Administrative Order Number no. 13-2020 provides that the implied abandonment of goods may be lifted by the district collector. So merong authority si district collector to lift the implied abandonment status sa shipment. In fact, this is okay, this is done by the Deputy District Collector for Operations. Si Deputy Collector for Operations po yung merong account na kung saan gagamitin para ma-lift yung implied abandonment status sa E2M system. But this is not automatic. There should be a request, okay? A written request by the owner, the importer, or the consignee. And that request must be coupled with the payment of the fees and charges in accordance with the Customs Administrative Order. Now, we mentioned about the request. So what will your request include? Now, your request must include the following statements. Number one, your reasons why the goods were impliedly abandoned. So you can cite fraud, accident, mistake, excusable negligence. So one, one ground could be like in the case of the mother kanina, hindi niya alam na dumating na pala yung shipment niya. So that's a ground, that's a reason. Number two, let us say, ito din yung mga usual na nangyayari na abutan ng expiration yung accreditation ni importer. So dahil naabutan na expiration, hindi agad nakapag-lodge ng goods declaration, hinintay pa na ma-renew yung kanyang accreditation. So that's another reason. Okay, that's, that could be that could be excusable negligence. Okay, mistake would be hindi ang hindi tama yung yung mga documents. So that could also be a ground for your request for the lifting of implied abandonment. You have to state also in your request whether the goods were declared abandoned in the automated system. So ibig sabihin na declare na siya abandoned under the E2M system or meron talagang decree of abandonment na na-issue na over the goods. Okay? For example, if um umabot na ng three months, hindi ka pa rin nag-file ng goods declaration, so the district collector will institute abandonment proceeding at nagkaroon na ng decree of abandonment. So you have to state that, that there's a decree of abandonment issued by the district collector on this date. Okay? Next, the number of times in the past that the importer has requested for lifting of abandonment. So makikita natin dito kung sino yung mga importers na suki, kay suki sa mga lifting of abandonment kasi nakikita dito kung ilang beses na silang nagre-request for lifting. Makikita din natin dito kung sino yung mga importer na mahilig magbayad din sa penalty. Kasi napakalaki po ng penalty, we would you would know that later on. Okay? And then there should also be a statement if the goods are subject of an alert order or of a warrant of seizure and detention. So kailangan din po sa request for lifting na meron kayong clearance from the Customs Intelligence and Investigation Service, the Enforcement and Security Service or our Customs Police Division, the Law Division, and the Management Information System Technology Group. Bakit kailangan yung CIIS, ESS, and Law Division? Kasi ito po yung mga opisina na merong role kapag yung shipment ay subject to alert order. Okay, for alert order, si Law Division po yung nagmo-monitor 
nitong mga shipment na to. Si CIIS at saka si ESS, okay? Ang role naman ni CIIS since the alert uh, alert order monitoring clearing house is under intelligence group. So meron pong data si CIIS on what are the shipment subject of an alert order. ESS, bakit kailangan si ESS? Kasi po under existing regulations, it is the enforcement and security service that serves the warrant of seizure and detention. In fact, if you read your warrant of seizure and detention, ang addressing niyan is the district commander. Diba? For example, warrant of seizure and detention, Republic of the Philippines versus 1 by 20 shipment. Ang nakalagay dyan, 2, the district commander, enforcement and security service, customs police division, port of. Diba? You are hereby ordered to forthwith seize the above shipment. So kaya si ESS would also certify because the ESS would know what shipments are subject of a warrant of seizure and detention. And then the law division would also come into play because si law division po alam niya kung ano yung mga shipments subject of alert order, alam niya kung ano yung mga shipments na subject of a pending seizure and for future proceeding, alam din niya kung ano yung mga shipment na meron ng decree of abandonment. Si Mistig naman would also confirm the inactive status of the lodgement of the goods declaration. Machi-check niya kung wala ba talagang goods declaration na nailodge or kung meron man kung ano yung problema, kung meron bang system error over the goods. Like for example, if yung reason niya for lifting was system error, okay, so Mistig will then certify if indeed on that date and on that time as mentioned by the importer, there was a system error or system downtime experience by the E2M system. Okay, once the implied abandonment has been lifted, so all these requirements, ito pong requirements na nakita natin dito, would be submitted to the customer care center. You have to include in your request yung corresponding bill of lading. Why? Because the bill of lading would tell us the description of the goods, the voyage number, the name of the vessel. Diyan po natin makikita kung anong pangalan ng vessel at kung kailan po nag-arrive yung vessel, kailan din po yung date of last discharge ng vessel. And this is the reckoning period for the counting of the 15-day period to file the goods declaration. Okay. And this, okay, this, these documents will be submitted to the customer care center and will then be forwarded to the office of the district collector. Section 6.3 of the CAO provides that once the implied abandonment has been lifted and unless the same has been released by the Bureau of Customs, the owner, importer, or consignee of the imported goods may reclaim the impliedly abandoned goods. So this is the period that you can reclaim the impliedly abandoned goods. And how do you do that? By correspondingly filing the goods declaration. So you can, you can reclaim your goods by filing the goods declaration but subject to the following conditions. Number one, the subject goods have not been disposed of by the Bureau of Customs. Of course, anong ikiklaim mo kung naibenta na ni Customs? Anong ikiklaim mo kung na turnover na ni Customs to the appropriate government agency? Ano pa yung ikiklaim mo if Customs has already used these goods? So you have to make sure that you can only claim the goods if these are not yet been disposed of by the Bureau of Customs. Second, you file the goods declaration within 30 calendar days after the lapse of the period of 15 days. So in effect, 45 days. 30 plus 15 days. So you have to file your goods declaration within 45 days from the date of last discharge of the vessel or aircraft. Third, you pay the duties, taxes, and other charges in full. But of course, it goes without saying how can you how can you obtain the release of your goods if you do not pay the duties, taxes, and other charges? So there must be payment, full payment of the duties, taxes, and other charges. Third, if in uh, fourth, if in case you need to pay anything with a terminal operator, kung kailangan yung magbayad sa container freight station, sa terminal yard for storage charges, then you also have to pay these charges prior to the release of your shipment. And then, whatever expenses incurred by the Bureau of Customs has or have also, you are also required to pay 
in full and compliance with all other pertinent legal requirements, especially if the shipment are considered to be regulated or restricted. What if, what if for whatever reason, yung shipment mo ay na deemed impliedly abandoned, yung shipment mo meron ng corresponding decree of abandonment, yung shipment mo ay naibenta na ni customs. Can you still go after customs? Do you still have the remedy? Okay, do you still have the remedy for you to obtain the release of your goods? The answer is no. You could no longer obtain the release of your goods kasi nga naibenta ni ni customs. But, but, if meron pang sobra doon sa napagbentahan ni customs, then you can claim the proceeds thereof. In fact, it is mentioned in section 6.4 of cow number 13-2020 where the owner or importer of imported goods intends to claim the proceeds of the sale after deduction of any duty and tax and other charges and expenses as provided in section 1141, 1143, and 1144 of the CMTA, the claimant may file a request at the office of the district collector within a period of 30 calendar days from the payment of the auction price. Okay, for example, nung dumating yung shipment mo, hindi mo alam na dumating na. You were not notified. Nalaman mo na lang na na-auction off na yung shipment mo. Naibenta na ni customs. Ngayon, gusto mo ma-recover. Kasi nga, binili mo yun, di ba? Nagbayad ka sa abroad. Gusto mo makuha kung ano man yung pwede mong kunin. So, you will claim the proceeds of the of the impliedly abandoned goods which were sold off by the Bureau of Customs. So you can do that by filing your request. And this request must be filed within a period of 30 calendar days from the payment of the auction price. So hindi rin pwede na ba, nakukunin mo yung proceeds pagkatapos ng isang taon. Kasi the law requires it should be within a period of 30 calendar days. Diba? Kung gusto mo yung isang bagay, dapat kunin mo agad. Diba? If you want something, you have to do something to get it at the earliest time possible. So if interesado ka talaga sa shipment mo, customs, diba? if you're interested, customs will know if you file the goods declaration. Kahit hindi pa nga dumating yung shipment mo, nag-file ka na ng goods declaration. So that means you're really interested in getting your goods, in getting your goods released from the Bureau of Customs. And if, nang, if natapos na yung tatlongpong araw, natapos na yung labing limang araw, at hindi ka man na nag-file ng goods declaration, ang isipin ni customs, hindi ka na interesado. Diba? Hindi ka na interesado. Kaya nga merong implied abandonment. So in this case, if you're still interested to claim the proceeds of the impliedly abandoned goods which were sold by the Bureau of Customs, you have to express your interest within 30 calendar days from the payment of the auction price. Otherwise, whatever proceeds will be, deposited to the account of the Bureau of Customs through the for future fund created under Section 1151 of the CMTA. So in this particular instance, if you want to claim the proceeds from the sale of the impliedly abandoned goods, you have to indicate the details of the shipment. Why? Para, para alam ni Customs kung ano yung shipment na, na gusto mong i-claim. The details of the shipment. So 1 by 20 container van, said to contain personal effects, said to contain ceramic tiles, said to contain fresh fruits or whatever, whatever details of the shipment you have. The reasons why the goods were impliedly abandoned. You have to state yung fame kanina, yung fraud, accident, mistake, or excusable negligence. Why did you not know that the goods arrived? Why did you not file the corresponding goods declaration? Why did you not pay the assessed duties, taxes, and other charges? Okay. The number of times in the past that the importer has claimed for the proceeds of the sale of abandoned shipments, makikita ni Kosong nito, ah, kwanto ah, frequent tong ginagawa ni importer, nasasanay na si importer na gawin na lang to. Okay. And lastly, whether the goods were subject of an alert order or of a warrant of seizure and detention. And for this purpose, clearances from the corresponding office are necessary. Upon receipt of this request, yung request for lifting of 
uh, the request for lifting or the request for the claim of the proceeds of the sale of impliedly abandoned goods, the district collector shall forward this request to the law division to determine whether an offense has been committed. Why? Bakit? Kasi kung merong offense, merong kang kasalanan, then customs will not approve your request. Eh, kasalanan mo naman pala. Diba? Or, or merong criminal offense. If you will obtain, if the goods will be released to you, then that would constitute as a violation of our customs law. Like for example, regulated goods. Gusto mong i-claim, pero wala ka palang permit. So that's not, that's not allowed because that, the release thereof would be contrary to law. So the law division may conduct summary proceedings similar to forfeiture proceedings to determine whether an offense has been committed. And number three, any decision allowing the release of the proceeds shall be considered as adverse decision. So if it's an adverse decision, then that will be subject to the automatic review by the commissioner or the secretary of finance as the case may be. Bakit siya considered as automatic review or bakit siya considered as adverse decision? For example, Nagbenta si Customs ng 1 million pesos. Merong sobrang 300,000 pesos. Of course, yung 300,000 pesos would have been an additional di ba, an additional collection on the part of the Bureau of Customs. So kapag ibinalik ni Customs yung 300,000 kay importer, malulugi si Customs ng 300,000. So that's why it's considered as adverse decision. That's why the law requires that in case of such thing happening, then the Secretary of Finance or the Commissioner of Customs should conduct an, an automatic review of the decision of the district collector. Okay, now, nandito na tayo sa pinaka-exciting part, yung discussion sa mga penalties. Kasi marami dito ang umiiyak. Okay. TAO 13-2020 provides for the penalties, surcharges, interest, and other charges to be imposed. For the lifting, so yung lifting, yung request mo na malift yung implied abandonment status. Kasi nga, kapag implied the abandoned na sa shipment, you could no longer lodge the goods declaration. May mag a na BL not found. So how can you proceed with us with the release of your shipment? If, if, hindi, ka, if hindi mo masuccessfully stored yung, yung goods declaration sa E2M system. So you have to request for the lifting. Now, if you request... Okay, if you request for the lifting of implied abandoned goods and your reason is because you failed to file or lodge the goods declaration okay, within the prescribed period, okay, the original 15-day period, you have to pay a penalty of 10,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment or 20,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. Ito yung sinayit ko na example sa inyo kanina. Yung mother, di ba? Meron siyang regalo. Niregaluhan siya ng kanyang anak. Ng bag for her birthday. So, di ba nga, niregaluhan siya, hindi siya nagbayad, di ba? You, you receive it gratuitously, wala kang gagastusin. E ngayon, para lang maiklaim yung regalo niyang bag, kailangan siyang magbayad ng penalty na 10,000 pesos. Or worse, worse, yung worth ng bag ay less than 10,000 pesos pero kailangan niya magbayad ng penalty ng 10,000 pesos. So marami ho dito ang umaaray. Marami ho dito ang umiiyak dahil sa customs administrative order na ito. But of course, what can we do? Okay? Ako, as a customs officer, what can I do? That's a customs administrative order. Kahit, kahit, na, na, kahit po na uh, even if we feel sorry, for this, even if it's painful for us to see our importers crying or yung, yung, yung for that particular case, yung mother po na umiiyak, eh, what can I do? It is a customs administrative order. And as, as long as this customs administrative order remains to be effective until this customs administrative order is modified by the Commissioner of Customs, or unless this, this customs administrative order is declared by the courts to be invalid, it remains to be effective. It remains to be applicable. It remains to be implemented and followed by the Bureau of Customs. So kaya nga, ang challenge namin ito, ang request namin 
sa atin po mga stakeholders, be mindful of the period required by law. Be mindful of the obligations that you have because your failure, failure to comply with your obligations, with your responsibilities within the period prescribed by law would, okay, would entail additional expenses. Okay. okay lang sana if you're a multinational company or kung medyo malaki yung, yung, yung importation mo and the 10,000 pesos may just be a very small portion vis-a-vis -vis the amount of the amount of your shipment. Like for example, if your shipment is 10 million pesos, or the, syempre yung 10,000 pesos would just be a portion of 10 million pesos. But if yung shipment mo is only one out, uh, is only below 10,000 pesos, di ba? Yung, like for example, yung parcel mo, yung pinili mo online below 10,000 pesos, wala ka nang babayarang duties and taxes kasi diminimi siya under Section 423. Under Section 423 of the CMTA, no duties and taxes shall be collected on goods with FOB or FCA value of 10,000 pesos or below. Diba? Nag, bu nag bumili ka online. Alam mo yung batas. Alam mo na wala kang babayaran duties and taxes kapag yung shipment mo FOB or FCA value of less than 10,000 pesos. But, hindi ka nag-file ng consecration within the prescribed period. Oh, wala kang ang binayaran tax pero babayaran, magbabayad ka ng penalty. Okay? So yun yung sad reality niyan. Of course, di ba? That's a sad reality but remember, you cannot claim, I sir, sorry, I do not know. Sorry, I did not know that I have to file the good situation within 15 days because under the civil code, ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. You cannot make that as an excuse. You cannot say, I do not know, I did not know, I was not aware. Your, your, uh, your lack of awareness, your lack of knowledge of the law will not excuse you from paying the penalty prescribed under Customs Administrative Order Number 13-2020. Eh, di ba ang lakas ng aray? 10,000 pesos, hindi ka nagpag-file ng good situation within the original period. Eh, imagine, this is, okay, ang application nito is per request. And our request is per bill of lading. So imagine if you have 10 bills of lading, 10 shipments, 10 different shipments at 10,000 pesos each. So that's already 100,000 pesos, di ba? Oh, do you think the importer will pay this? If in case, for example, yung nagkamali, yung, yung, yung freight forwarding company, hindi niya na properly inform si si importer or yung customs broker yung nagkamali do you think your importer is willing to shell out that much no di ba sino mas malulugi si customs broker okay, si customs broker maliit na nga yung brokerage fee magbabayad pa siya ng 10,000 pesos na penalty so please as i repeat as we continuously repeat this one please take note of your obligation because this would entail you additional expenses. So what if meron ang decree of abandonment, double yung penalty. It will be 20,000 pesos. Meron bang surcharge? Walang surcharge because surcharge is only imposed on your failure to pay the assessed duties, taxes, and other charges. Meron bang interest? Wala din because interest is only imposed for your failure to pay the duties, taxes, and other charges. Docket and request charge 1,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. 500 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment. And then a documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos is also collected. Now, ito, failure to file the goods declaration within the original prescribed period. What if, what if, alam mo na meron kang remedy. Alam mo na pwede kang mag-request for extension of the period to file the goods declaration. Nag-request ka ng extension, nag-grant yung request mo extension, but then you still fail to file the goods declaration after the grant of your extension. So, mag mas mabigat po yung penalty. Kanina, yung penalty is only 10,000 pesos, but this time, the penalty is 15,000 pesos. At kung meron ng decree of abandonment, 25,000 pesos. Wala pa rin surcharge kasi nga surcharge and interest is only imposed on the failure to pay the duties, taxes, and other charges. 
docket and request charge, 2,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment, 1,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment, and then a documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. Failure to pay the assessed duties and taxes 15 calendar days from final assessment. Ito yung binanggit ko sa inyo kanina. Assessment notice, you count 15 days. Okay? And then on that day, you count another 15 days. You fail to pay the duties, taxes, and other charges within those period, then that would entail you a penalty of 15,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment, 25,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment, and then meron ng surcharge kasi failure to pay na dito. It's a surcharge of 10%. Okay, or if it exceeds more than one year, if it exceeds one year, then 25% na ngayon yung surcharge. And then additional interest of 20% per annum, a docket and request charge of 2,000 pesos with decree of abandonment or 1,000 pesos without a decree of abandonment. A documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. Failure to pay the assessed duties and taxes in case of regulated goods. Ito yung shipment na merong kar karampatang permit na kailangan mong submit from the regulat regulatory agency. And you fail to, to I, for example, you have already submitted the permit, but then you fail to pay within 15 days from that period. Then you still have to pay a penalty of 20,000 pesos or 30,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. And then you have a surcharge of 10% or 25% if the period or if the if your failure to pay is more than one year and an interest of 20% per annum. The docket and request charge of 5,000 pesos if we decree of abandonment and 3,000 pesos if without a decree of abandonment. And then the documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. Next, your failure to submit the required permits. So regulated goods, kailangan mo ng permit, hindi ka nag-submit ng permit. Or you avail of Section 403, na provisional goods declaration ka, and you have 45 days from filing, from the date of filing your provisional goods declaration to complete your goods declaration. Or for example, kulang ka ng tax exemption endorsement and nag-expire na yung 45 days. Hindi ka pa rin nag-submit ng tax exemption endorsement. So, and then nag-tag na siya as abandoned in the system. And then ngayon na meron ka ng tax exemption endorsement, pwede ka nang mag-continue sa processing. You still have to pay 15,000 pesos of penalty. O di ba? Nag-tax exemption endorsement ka nga para wala kang babayaran duties and taxes. Pero dahil natagalan kang isecure yun, nagbayad ka tuloy ng penalty. So kung sa tingin ninyo, mas malaki pa yung penalty kaysa dun sa duties and taxes na babayaran ninyo, much better magbayad na lang kayo ng duties and taxes kaysa hintayin nyo pa yon at magka-penalty pa kayo. And always remember, the longer your shipment is in the port, the longer your shipment is in the Bureau of Customs, the higher the cost will be. Why? You have to pay storage charges. You have to pay demerage charges. You have to pay other charges counted from the day that your shipment arrived in the port. So yun yung lagi nyong iisipin. Meron kasing iba na yung iniisip lang, ah, tax-free pala to, ah, duty-free pala to, sige, mag-avail ako ng exemption. But you did not realize, they don't realize na yung pag-file ng application for tax exemption would entail days, di ba? Maghihintay ka pa ng ilang araw kasi nga, hindi naman yan makukuha mo agad-agad. And hindi mo naisip na Matutulog pala yung shipment mo doon sa puerto, matutulog pala yung shipment mo sa container freight station, sa container terminal, at meron ka palang babayarang storage charges. Of course, after the expiration of the free storage period. Then, wala yung surcharge kasi nga it does not involve the failure to pay the duties, taxes, and other charges. No interest, but yung docket and request charge medyo mabigat, 5,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. 3,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment. And then the documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. So you may ask, sir, bakit pa kailangan mag-lifting? Okay? Baka nakalimutan nyo or baka hindi nyo narinig kanina? Okay. If your goods 
are considered to have been impliedly abandoned. Abandoned siya sa E2M system because you cannot proceed with the lodgement of the goods declaration. Your remedy is to file for the request for lifting of the implied abandonment status of your shipment. And if ever you fail, you will file the request for lifting, it would entail the payment of penalty, surcharges or interest, if applicable, docket and request charge and documentary stamp tax. So, iisa isahin natin i-discuss ngayon kung ano yung mga situations at kung magkano yung babayaran niyo. Okay. Failure to submit the required permits or information in the case of PGD after the lapse of the approved extension of 45 days. So, for example, na provisional goods declaration ka, you have a period of 45 days to comply with the inform. You have to comply with the permit or to complete your goods declaration. Pag nung malapit na matapos yung 45 days, nag-request ka ng extension. Extend mo na kami sir, kasi hindi pa namin natatanggap yung kailangan namin isubmit. Okay. Approve yung request mo. Lumagpas na ulit yung second 45 day, umabot na ng 90 days, wala ka pa rin sinabmit, you will pay the penalty of 20,000 pesos or 30,000 pesos with decree of abandonment. Okay? No surcharge, no interest, but the docket and request charge will now be higher. 10,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment or 5,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment. And then the documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. Next situation, failure to submit the required documents under Section 117 within 15 days from final assessment. What is Section 117? Yan yung provision on regulated goods. So regulated goods ka, kailangan mo mag-submit ng permit, ng clearance, ng authority. Hindi ka nag-submit within 15 days from date of final assessment. Of course, magbabayad ka ng penalty if you now process the lifting of your implied abandoned status in the E2M system. 15,000 pesos or 25,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. No surcharge, no interest. Docket and request charge, medyo mabigat din. 5,000 pesos if with decree of abandonment or 3,000 pesos if without decree of abandonment. And then a documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. Okay. Next, failure to claim the goods within 30 calendar days from date of payment. So kanina, okay, failure to pay, failure to file, failure to file permits, failure to complete your provisional goods declaration. Ngayon, nag-file ka na ng permit, nag-file ka na ng goods declaration, nag-bayad ka na nga, Pero hindi mo i-clean yung shipment mo. So customs can still, okay, customs can declare the implied abandoned status of your shipment. Why? Kasi kung iaalaw natin yung mga importers na hindi i-clean yung shipment nila, magkakaroon tayo ng port congestion. Mas marami yung shipment na nandoon sa container yard. Mas marami yung shipment na nandoon sa container freight station. And that would also increase the risk of pilferage. Baka naman manakaw pa yan yung shipment mo. So in order for the in order for the importers para mas mas mamuging motivated sila na i-claim. So dahil natatakot sila na kapag hindi nila i-claim, maaabandon yung shipment nila. The law provides for that implied abandonment situation. So para merong Merong force okay, para makumpel yung mga importer na i-claim yung goods, yung goods nila within a period of 30 calendar days. So kapag naging implied abandon siya sa E2M system, sa status, ang status ng shipment mo, then you want to claim the goods, then you have to pay a penalty of 10,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment or 20,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. And then a surcharge of, uh, there's no surcharge, no interest, kasi nga it does not involve the failure to pay the duties, taxes, and other charges. Request and docket charge of 1,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment or 500 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment. Okay, documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. 
Number nine, failure to claim passengers' baggage within 30 calendar days from arrival or payment. Okay? Nagpadala nga sa inyo ng bagahe, nagbumili ka sa abroad, okay? tapos hindi mo naman na-claim, ah, magbabayad ka ng 1,000 pesos or 2,000 pesos plus 20% of the value in excess of the diminings. So for example, kung 10,000 pesos or below lang, wala kang additional na 20%. Pero kapag lumagpas ka ng 10,000 pesos, 10,001, 12,000, 13,000, 15,000, you have to pay an additional of 20% na penalty. That also applies to your failure to claim mail matter within 30 calendar days from arrival. Next, failure to mark the imported goods within 30 calendar days from receipt of the notice to mark. Diba, binanggit ko sa inyo kanina, under Section 710, the owner of the imported goods is required to mark with any of the official language of the Philippines. Okay, the goods conspicuously, okay, permanently, indelibly, and legibly so that the ultimate purchaser in the Philippines will know the country of origin. So for example, if meron kang binibenta na, na furniture, okay, eh hindi mo naman pwedeng markahan yung furniture because that would be economically prohibitive. Ibig sabihin, masisira yung, yung artistry ng furniture, yung design of furniture kung susulatan mo. So what would you do? You mark the immediate container. So kung meron yang box, you mark the box so that the ultimate purchaser in the Philippines would know the country of origin. And if you fail to do the same, then that would also constitute as implied abandonment. You fail to mark the imported goods within 30 calendar days from receipt of the notice to mark, there is implied abandonment. And what if you want to claim the goods, you still want to process kasi nga meron ka ng order. Okay, but you have to pay a penalty of 15,000 pesos or 25,000 pesos if meron ng decree of abandonment. Request and docket charge of 5,000 pesos if we decree of abandonment or 3,000 pesos if wala pang decree of abandonment. Next, kapag naman yung goods mo ay stored in a bonded warehouse, your failure to withdraw the imported raw materials or imported goods within one year from date of arrival. Di ba alam naman natin yung bonded warehousing scheme? Wala kang babayarang duties and taxes kapag yung shipment mo ay papasok sa bonded warehouse but this are raw materials that you will use in order to produce a finished product. So what if lumagpas na ng isang taon, hindi mo nagamit o hindi mo pinoses yung inyong raw materials, then that would also constitute as implied abandonment. Correct, Dinaline. Aside from the, pay the payment of penalty, your failure to mark would also, would also impose the penalty of Marking duty equivalent to 5% of the dutiable value. Yes, correct po. Meron din po tayong marking duty equivalent to 5% of the dutiable value. Thank you very much. This means po na nakikinig po kayo kasi you, you, uh, you, contribute. Okay, you contribute something in our discussion. Thank you po, Ms. Dainali. Okay. Now, balik tayo dun sa raw materials. Dapat gamitin mo yung raw materials mo in the production of your finished product within one year. Eh hindi mo nagamit. For whatever reason, wala namang binanggit yung customs administrative order na justifiable reason. Wala naman siyang binanggit na exemption. So no exemption. It applies on all cases. So you have to pay 15,000 pesos penalty and a 25,000 penalty if there is already a decree of abandonment issued by the district collector of customs. Docket and request charge of 5,000 pesos or 3,000 pesos. Failure to withdraw perishable goods. Yung kanina, non-perishable goods. Ito naman, perishable goods. These are goods which will decrease in their, in their, uh, in their quality if they will not be used immediately. For example, fresh fruits. Eh, di ba, perishable yan kasi you have to consume them, you have to use them within a specific period, otherwise mararaten sila. So, these are perishable goods. So, you have to withdraw these perishable goods within three months from the date of arrival. Otherwise, there will be implied abandonment. And 
if ever you will proceed with claiming these goods, you have to request for lifting and that would entail a penalty of 15,000 pesos or 25,000 pesos if there is a decree of abandonment. Next. Okay. Failure to withdraw perishable goods after the lapse of the approved extension of three months. Okay. Under section 811 kanina na pinakita ko, you still have additional three months. The original three month period, hindi mo pa nagamit kasi nga nagkulang ka ng, nagkulang ka ng equipment, nasira yung equipment, hindi pa, hindi pa dumating yung iba mong raw materials. So you requested for another three months and then the extended three months have already expired. You still have not yet withdrawn their, your goods or you still have not produced or you still have not used them to produce a finished product, then you are liable to pay a penalty. And the penalty is higher. Okay, The penalty is much uh, bigger, more costly. It's 20,000 pesos or 30,000 pesos if there's already a decree of abandonment. No surcharge, no interest. Docket and request charge of 10,000 pesos with decree of abandonment or 5,000 pesos if there's no decree of abandonment. And then documentary stamp tax of 30 pesos. Okay, let us say for example, yung kanina kasi is you still want to claim the goods. What if the goods have already been disposed of by the Bureau of Customs pero meron pang natira? Meron pang naiwan doon sa pinagbentahan ni Customs. Like for example, naibenta siya ni Customs at 1 million pesos tapos yung expenses ni Customs sa duties, taxes, storage charges and all others would amount to 800,000 pesos. So meron pang natirang 200,000 pesos. At gusto mong kunin yung process na 200,000 pesos. Ano nga ulit yung gagawin mo? Mag-request ka to claim the proceeds within how many days? 30 days. Diba? 30 days from the date of payment by the winning buyer. Okay, nag-request ka. Meron din yung penalty. Kasi nga, kasi nga meron ginawa si Customs. Diba? Customs has already sold off your goods. Ibinenta niya. Okay, meron ng expenses. Meron na na-incur ng mga other charges. That would have been an additional revenue on the part of Customs. Because of that, hindi nangyari. So there's a penalty on your part. So that's 30,000 pesos or 20%. I think the 20% is based on the proceeds. So if ever yung, yung natira is 20,000 pesos at 200,000 pesos, 200,000 pesos times 20%, that's 40,000 pesos. So mas malaki yung 40,000 pesos, then 40%, 40,000 pesos is the penalty. Okay, No surcharge, no interest, but you have to pay a docket and request charge of 10,000 pesos. <clears throat> You may ask, sir, bakit kanina merong decree of abandonment and ngayon wala ng decree? Of course, excuse. Of course, naibenta na ni Customs, di ba? So kung naibenta na ni Customs, that means the goods were already forfeited. The goods were already abandoned. Meron ng decree of abandonment na previously issued. Kaya wala na siyang nailagay na with decree of abandonment. So that's 30,000 pesos or 20% whichever is higher. So sir, question, kapag ba nag-file kami, magbabayad kami agad ng penalty? No. Okay, no. You will only, when you file your request, di ba yung request nyo, yung bill of lading nyo, yung mga state, yung mga, yung mga facts that you have to state in your request, when you file your request, you will, you will only pay the docket and request charge muna. Yung, 10,000 pesos, 5,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos, or 500 pesos the case maybe, plus the documentary stamp tax. So when will you pay the penalty? Under the Customs Administrative Order, you will only pay the penalty once your request has been approved. Why? What if hindi ma-approve? Nakagas, di ba? Gumastos ka na, pero hindi na-approve. So that's why the cow requires that only when your request has been approved that you will be required to pay the penalty. So how will customs know if the penalty is paid? How will customs know if the docket and request charge has been paid? You will be required to attach your proof of payment, usually yung Bureau of Customs official receipt. Yung kulay green. Okay? Yung kulay green na resibo. Ano? Not kulay green. I'm sorry. Not kulay green. Yung kulay 
medyo gray, okay? May medyo gray na may pagka brown. So yan yung kulay ng resibo na i-attach nyo for your payment or for as proof of your payment of the docket and request charge and the penalty once your request has been approved. And what if hindi ka nagbayad? Of course, your request will not be processed. Okay? So that ends my presentation.